Uh, my background is I was an EMT out in California, Oakland. That's where I grew up. Uh, while I was working as an EMT, uh, I liked writing code. I still am writing code. I'm a web, web developer now. Uh, but uh, I, I grew a very strong love for um, cardiophysiology, how the heart works, what electrical signals it puts out, what those electrical signals look like. And uh, these things just seem to dovetail together to put this all together and uh, make an EKG. This talk is about making an EKG. Oh, and I hear that you guys pronounce it ECG. Is that? All right, well, going to have to roll with me here. It's EKG for the next half hour, if you don't mind. Um, so this talk is about how to make an EKG with an Arduino. I know it's not a Raspberry Pi. Feel free to ask me questions about that later on. Um, but for right now, we're working with an EKG. Um, so we'll go through you know, the intro, which we just covered, table of contents, da 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 uh, And we will get through all of this to the live demo pretty quick, because I think the live demo is where this stuff really shines. So let's do a real quick crash course in EKG theory. Um, when your heart fires off, there are, well, let's back up a little bit even further. Your heart is made up of four chambers, right? Two atria, two ventricles. Up in the upper right-hand atria is a little tiny patch called the SA node, or sinoatrial node. And it's that little bundle way up there, if you can see it. Um, that little patch has just these intrinsic pacemaker cells that fire off, uh, on average, about 60 to 80 beats per minute. Uh, for your normal, healthy adult. Then those electrical signals uh, travel down through the atria, and they hit this big area right here, which is kind of hard to see on the screen, but it's basically the center of the heart. That's called the atrioventricular node. Once you hit the atrioventricular node, you are into ventricle territory, and this, the ventricles are responsible for pushing all the blood around your heart. So if you, if you feel a pulse, you're feeling the pulse caused by uh, the ventricles pumping blood, not anything to do with atria. In fact, atria are really there. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know who came up with the heart, but it seems like uh, the atria are there just to preload the ventricles. So they are there just to put an extra little oomph of blood into the ventricles before the ventricles do their job. Anyway, that's more on mechanics rather than electrophysiology. So let's go back to electrophysiology. Once you get down to the atrioventricular node, then you hit bundle of hiss. Bundle of hiss is this. Uh, bundle of fibers inside the septum of the heart. That's the wall in between the two ventricles. Then the electrical signal goes down past the uh, bundle of Hiss and whoosh, out through the Purkinje fibers. And the Purkinje fibers are the fibers that go up along you know, the sides uh, and walls of the ventricles and really tell the ventricles, hey, it's time to pump now, right? So how does this look when you're looking at a EKG? Are, are, you guys generally familiar with like a multimeter, like uh, something you can stick an uh, electrode on one part of an object, like a battery, stick electrode on the other side of the battery, and you get a reading of how voltage goes, right? So that's a multimeter, a voltage meter. We're doing the exact same thing with an EKG, but that voltage changes over time. It's like the AA battery is just changing voltage all of a sudden, right? Um, and you'll get different waveforms or different shapes depending on where those electrical signals are coming from in the heart. So the first uh, little bump right here we see is the P wave. That P wave is indicative of the atria firing off. Then we get a little bit of a rest while this signal kind of travels down and gets to the atrioventricular node. And then we get this huge QRS complex, so the QR and S waves. Um, that is the electrical signal traveling throughout the Purkinje fibers. And it's got that kind of a weird like this shape because the electrical signal is actually going back and forth through the heart. Once it gets down to the bottom of the Purkinje fibers, where do the Purkinje fibers go? They go back up the heart. And so that electrical signal is actually transitioning direction, or the pol polarity of that signal is changing direction. Finally, uh, the heart has depolarized, right? So it's it's spent, it's had all this energy built up, uh, and it's spent it to, to tell the heart to pump. It needs to repolarize, and that's that last T wave right there. So, any questions on EKG theory? Good? Feeling great? Ready to go into cardiac surgery? I've got scalpels. Okay, so you get, uh, finally, when this is printed out over uh, on an EKG strip, you'll get a strip that looks like this. Uh, and this is, this is a real strip. 
little bit more to tell you about the what that strip uh, really contains. It contains, of course, the waveform, but it also contains this grid, and this grid is super important. This grid tells you uh, how long certain waveforms took to complete. You want to know that. They also tell you how big waveforms are, but that's really not as important as how long did certain waves take to complete. That can tell you, um, is one part of the heart lagging behind another? Is one part of the heart uh, kind of freaking out because it can't talk to the other one? Um, so that's the, again, that's the major important part. The little tiny squares are about a uh, 0.04 of a second, right? Or 0.04 of a second. You've got 0.2 seconds in one of the larger red grids. Okay, so how did I build this? Um, little quick little side story. Uh, I, live, uh, I lived in Brooklyn when I found out about this, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, there's a place called Micro Center. I don't know if you have like general big electronic stores generally available around here. Can I get a nod if that is the case? Great, all right, so general same idea. Ours, uh, or Micro Center, had this deal where if you bring in a printer cartridge, you get $3 off of anything you buy. Turns out there was also, uh, I, I had friends with printers, so I was in the good. Uh, I brought in a printer, car printer cartridge and I got a $7 Arduino with $3 off. Guys, I got a $4 Arduino. $4 Arduino. $4 for that Arduino, okay? Uh, yeah, that's, that's why I'm here today, guys. This talk's over. Uh, then uh, I got an EKG shield uh, by Olamex. Uh, a shield is just another board that you can put on top of the Arduino to give it extra capacity or capabilities. The leads, the things that attach to people, uh, those are 20 bucks. And then the red dots, the actual electrodes that stick to you, uh, you know, you could buy a hundred of them for five bucks. Um, so in total, that was about $82. Um, I don't know what it is in, in euros, so Google it. Right. Um, great. Let's talk about what that Olamex sends out. If you load up the Arduino with Shield, and by the way, the Arduino Shield runs C++ code. Um, sorry. Um, but uh, this is generally what uh, this is, not generally, this is what uh, the Shield is sending out, what the Arduino is sending out. It's sending out these structs, and the structs contain uh, sync bytes to let you know where a beginning of a packet is being sent out. Uh, version, which I don't use. Count, which I don't use. Data, which I only use one of the arrays of this six uh, item array. And then switches, which I don't use. Uh, and they're, I'm sure, used by the, the people who developed it. Okay, well, how does it get sent out of the Arduino? So that was the shape of the data. How does it actually get sent out? Uh, again, some more C++ code, but basically what's going on is it reads data from uh, each of the six channels. Uh, it packages that up. Since it's a 10-bit signal and we've only got eight bits per byte, well, we gotta do some chopping, and uh, that's why we have you know, this first part of the array and a second part of the array item uh, is devoted to the uh, upper half and lower half of the 10-bit signal. Finally, at the very end, we send out the packet with serial write, and it's on our way to our computer. Now, if I was running Windows, which I'm not, I could try and use this uh, currently closed source version of Electric Guru. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't use Windows, so maybe it's now open, but when I checked about 10 minutes ago, it wasn't, so I'm gonna stand by that. Um, and I, I could have used that. I don't want to hurt any feelings, but I don't, I don't like Windows. So uh, I had to do something about it, especially closed source. I'm a big open source guy, uh, especially in healthcare. So in comes Pi Serial. Um, this is the Pi Serial logo. Um, this is my proposed suggestion for the Pi Serial logo. Uh, they have not gotten back to me. Um, I'm waiting. All right. And, and this is what I wrote. The, my, my general philosophy was let's keep this simple uh, and let's make sure it works well. Uh, this is a, might be a huge chunk of code and I don't want to uh, walk through every line of it. Uh, I just want to go through the, the major parts, the poignant parts. If you look at the first line after the definition of get next packet or 
Dunder, by the way, there was somebody, so I run the office out. How much time do I have so I don't run out of, how much time do I have? Somebody? 10 minutes? 12? I had a half an hour like five minutes ago. 15, all right, so I can negotiate this. All right, all right. Yeah, okay, so, um, so you know how we all kind of refer to the magic methods as like Dunder methods, like Dunder, get or Dunder set, right? Uh, I, I do uh, office hours on Saturday uh, in New York, and somebody came in, I was telling them about Dunders, and I accidentally said Dunder for a single underscore, and he said, no, no, man, that's a wonder. And I was like, that is the best thing I've ever heard. So anyway, so uh, right after the wonder get method that I've got here going on, uh, basically, I check for sync bytes. I say, okay, while the first byte that I have and the second byte that I have are not equal to my sync bytes, let me keep on trying to get some sync bytes, right? And so I'm kind of just throwing away data until I see, uh, see sync bytes. Finally, I've got sync bytes. Then I'll move on to putting those sync bytes into a byte array. Uh, I will extend the byte array with the other uh, 15 bytes that I expect to come from the Arduino based on the shape of that struct that we talked about just a few minutes ago. And uh, I pass it off to the next function here, the next, uh, you know, yeah, this is a, definitely a function. Um, so we calculate the values from packet data by passing in data, do basically some uh, shifting around uh, bitwise operations to re-splice together those numbers that uh, were broken apart in the Arduino. And we hand back values. Now, values is a list. However, because of the way the Arduino works, we're really only concerned about the first item in that list. And so just between you guys and me and whoever else is going to watch this video and, and whenever, uh, the, the first one's only used if you use my package. OK, and then it comes down to uh, some other Jimmy rigging around. It comes down to just using this uh, command line uh, command I've developed called exg. Uh, you give it the port that you want to go and read from, and you'll get this matplotlib window pop up, and it'll print out your EKG. If you wanted to, you could uh, download uh, you know, Olamex EKG, you know, download. You could pip install uh, it, and it'll, it comes with some mock data right out of the gates, because I wanted people to be able to play with it right away and not have to spend 50 bucks to get up and running. Um, to give you a comparison of what Olamex, my package, puts out and a real LifePak, e so this is a LifePak defibrillator. LifePak is just a brand. A defibrillator is something different than an EKG, I know, but it has a built-in waveform grabber, right? Um, and I wanted to give you a you know, side by side comparison of how, the, you know, how they look. And I think looking at them, you can see that, all right, I definitely got the major parts of the shape that I'm concerned about in there. Uh, so that was my first, like, oh, yeah, this is actually going to work. OK. Uh, and there's another picture of the Olamex versus, versus the life pack. This thing, again, is a defibrillator. So as well as reading from you, it shocks you, um, which is cool if you're into that. Um, all right, so now here's the, here's the next part. I need a volunteer. You will need to slightly disrobe, not completely. We're going to have fun, but we're not going to get that dirty. Um, basically, I need to access here, here, and here. If you are hairy, I did bring shavers. So. <laughs> you're kidding. You're laughing, but this is absolutely necessary. This is the first thing I do when I, well, when, when I worked as an EMT. You see somebody here, you're like, all right. And you wonder why you have no friends. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, and then I go, oh, oh, yeah. All right, so I do need a volunteer. You got, you're up? Fantastic. Oh, are you? You're hairless. <laughs> Next time. Smooth, if you want to. Smooth? Sure, smooth. All right, bud. So I'm going to try and make this quick, but I'm going to also try and be gentle. So uh, if you would so kindly expose this portion and this portion of your shoulders, and then down here on your lower left-hand side. Okay. okay. Great. Fantastic. How's your day going? Good. <laughs> Good, yeah? Are you a little bit worried about this? 
And yeah, it'd be okay. Don't need to be. It just hurts a little bit. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna be all right. You won't feel anything, and if you do, it just means I have a bug in my software. <laughs> oh shit. Hold on to that for me. That uh, you don't actually need to do anything other than don't shake it at all. Otherwise, <sighs> <laughs> last time I shook it, I didn't wake up for a few days. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay. Damn it. I'm getting a little bit nervous. So I'm got these reversed. There we go. All right, so hooking up these leads, we've got smoke over fire. That's how I remember it, and that's why I got it reversed. <laughs> I'm usually looking at my patient in a different way, and so I started to put on the electrodes in a different way. All right, we're going to hope for the best. This actually didn't work. I don't know what uh, happened along my travels from New York, but I was getting super noisy data. So I hope this works. If it doesn't, I'm just going to show you some of the mock data that I have. Okay, so EXG, port, spinning moon. Ah. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, so there's definitely some data. All right, I need you to hold as still as possible for me, okay, because it is getting a little bit noisy here. But we definitely have data, right? And are you, are you feeling okay? I think so, yeah. All right, he thinks so. We're going to check back in in a few minutes. All right, great. So we have Jeff. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Miguel. Miguel, give it up for Miguel, everybody. He's alive. He did it. OK, uh, I don't know how much time I have left, so I'm going to try and make this quick. We're going to do a quick analysis. Miguel, don't shake. You're shaking, and I can see it. Uh, all right. So. <laughs> All right, so we've got our P wave in there. He's got a nice, clean P wave. Honestly, none of this data is clean. Uh, I apologize. But uh, we definitely see a P wave in there. We see the QRS complex, which is nice and sh uh, short. I'll tell you why that's nice in just a second. And then we see that T wave. Now, your ST uh, segment is just a little bit elevated, and that's the segment in between the S and the T wave. Not a huge problem. That's most likely my software. If it was legit, uh, then I would be worried. And also, if there was like a, another three leads on you, um, I would be worried about a cardiac arrest. But, <laughs> but we don't have those three other leads. He's smiling at me. I'm going to say we don't need to start CPR. Uh, OK, so why do, why, just so that we get a little bit of fun, because it's fun to do this diagnostic stuff, even though I'm not a doctor, do not walk out of here. Miguel? I'm not a doctor, OK? <laughs> All right. Um, so why are, we, why are we happy that these waveforms are so thin? If they were wider, um, the waveforms get wider as we go lower down in the heart. So if the uh, waveforms were wider, that means it's taking longer for the signal to travel through the lower parts of the heart. That slowness is, could be indicative of some real bad things. Uh, we see the P wave, and so that means we know the signal is coming from the atria. That's normal. That's where we expect it to come from. Fantastic. Good job, Miguel. You've been practicing. All right. And then we see the T wave, which means, okay, our heart is repolarizing. So my medical diagnosis as a non-doctor is that you are alive. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. That's my job. Oh, and there is my work. Uh, that's not what I wanted to be at. Okay, um, a few disclaimers because I really don't want to get sued. Hey, and I've got five minutes. Yeah, and I just wanted to you know share that moment with you and me since we had that whole negotiation. <laughs> okay, um, a few disclaimers. This is not medical grade. Although I do think there is an epidemic, at least in America, I don't follow a whole lot of. Uh, the healthcare system in Ireland, but in uh, America, there's an epidemic of just super high healthcare costs that just don't need to be that high. Um, I would hope that this, you know, I'm not expecting this in particular, but just other ways of thinking of lowering the costs for healthcare in general are a super huge necessity. Um, we also need to think about preventative care. I don't mean to be, get too much on a soapbox here. Um, I will step off very briefly, but th that's my general aim is let's explore, let's have fun, and let's also do some good. Um, but at the moment, don't do good with this device right now. Um, 
There is one other thing. If we left this thing going for about a minute, we would see about a second lag. Right now there's already a lag just because it takes time to, oh, it's not up there. I want to see how Miguel's doing. Whew. OK, still good. Um, there's already a lag just because we've got uh, some reading, the normal processing lag, right? However, there is even more than that. There's a general drift away from the lag that we, the initial lag that we started off with, and that's about one second for every minute that it runs, and that's a problem. We don't want to be lagging that much. 